Are you pondering your research design options and have been advised to look into mixed methods research? Then you've come to the right place at the right time. In the next few minutes, I will provide you with the basics of the mixed methods approach. You'll learn when it makes sense to combine qualitative and quantitative data and analysis elements. Additionally, you'll become familiar with the most common methodologies and some helpful foundational texts. This way, you can quickly decide whether mixed methods are suitable for your work and where to continue your reading on this topic. And now, without further ado, welcome to Schreib! To understand mixed methods, it's worth taking a brief look into the philosophy of science. Epistemology refers to theories of knowledge and describes how researchers can convert reality to knowledge. In short, how is knowledge created? In today's research landscape, we can broadly distinguish between two prevailing epistemologies positivism and interpretivism. These camps have long debated which paradigm is the true one. In specific research disciplines like business, sociology or political science, both camps can be represented quite well. Some disciplines are so dominated by one camp that the other is rarely recognized. For example, natural sciences are truly positivist, which means that there's only one objective natural world out there which can be best represented by numbers and math. Some social sciences, like psychology, adopt this view, and others are somewhere in the middle. Here, different philosophical stands and epistemologies are accepted, which then follows in different methodologies that researchers apply. These methodologies are classically either qualitative, on the side of interpretivists, or quantitative, on the side of positivists. Since the social sciences have become much more pluralistic, the combinations of these methodologies has become more common and the advantages of the other side are more appreciated. Mixed methods were born. To speak of mixed methods, a study design must include both qualitative and quantitative elements. This means that the study design is intentionally developed with this combination in mind, and the research question can only be answered through this combination. The choice of method or combination should always be closely linked to the research question, objectives and the context. The first question you should ask yourself is, what added value do mixed methods offer compared to a study design with only qualitative or only quantitative methods? To help you with this, here are some advantages of mixed methods that you can use to justify your study design. First, mixed methods can simultaneously answer open and closed research questions. What does that mean? Through the qualitative part of the study, you can explore and answer an open research question. For example, how does an infodemic, which means a massive spread of misinformation, propagate on social media? With the quantitative part, you can test specific hypotheses. For example, a warning label indicating unverified third-party information reduces the spread of an infodemic, which helps answer a closed research question. Additionally, qualitative methods and open research questions often aim at developing new theories, so-called exploratory research, while quantitative methods and closed research questions typically test existing theories, so-called confirmatory research. Two, mixed methods can offset the weaknesses of each method. For example, qualitative interviews can add depth to a scientific study, but often only a small sample of experts can be interviewed. If you additionally send a quantitative online survey based on your interview findings to many more people, you achieve the breadth that a purely qualitative study couldn't provide. This could, for example, increase the statistical generalizability of your findings. The argument works in reverse as well. 3. Mixed methods can yield contradictory results. This might initially sound like a disadvantage. However, it's not. Contrasting results from both approaches can provide a deeper understanding of the phenomenon and highlight the limitations of each single method. This leads to more discussion points and more nuanced results. Should mixed methods always be used then? No, 
Of course not. It all depends on the research question, the objectives and context. If your work aims to test existing theory, incorporating qualitative elements might not make much sense. If you are at the early stages and explore a topic scarcely covered in existing literature, you might focus on qualitative exploratory research only. When implementing a mixed method study, you need to be clear about why you're doing it. This will then determine the study design and the sequence of implementing your methods. Here are the four most common variants of mixed methods designs. First, complementation. In this variant, qualitative and quantitative elements are equally prioritized and are intended to provide complementary results on the investigative phenomenon. 2. Completion. In this variant, one of the methods is prioritized and subsequently supported by the other to ensure the phenomenon is fully covered. 3. Sequential designs. The most common mixed method studies follow a sequential design. This means you complete one method first and then start with the other. The first option here that you have is the explorative sequential design. A qualitative study is used to develop constructs or hypotheses, which are then tested with a quantitative study. Option number two is a explanatory sequential design. First, a quantitative study is used to test hypotheses. Second, a qualitative study follows to understand why these results occurred. Four, parallel designs. The alternative to a sequential design is a parallel mixed methods design. Here you conduct multiple methods at the same time. In this case, the second study does not build on the results of the first, but instead the results of both studies are compared and contrasted once they are completed. For mixed methods research, validating the results is an important quality criterion. For quantitative data analyses, there are well standardized calculations that can validate constructs using SPSS or similar software. For qualitative data, the validation process is much softer and there's less consensus on what's standard. Criteria like these could apply. Does the research question align with the analysis? Is the chosen methodology suitable for answering the question? Does the design match the methodology? Is the sample appropriate? Or do results and conclusions fit the sample and the context? You basically apply the same techniques to ensure validity and reliability as you would for just one method. But now you do it for two. This is why mixed methods often means more workload, but in the end, you also have a more valuable study. So what is the difference between mixed methods and triangulation? In mixed methods, your qualitative and quantitative parts are typically treated equally. If one method is only worth 10% or so, then you can also speak of triangulation. The purpose of triangulation is to provide additional perspectives to the object under study. For example, by adding additional researchers, another theoretical perspective or additional data that is all different from the main study. Mixed methods is highly respected because it has some aspects of triangulation already built in. However, you can also perform triangulation without using quantitative and qualitative elements. Therefore, mixed methods and triangulation are related concepts but not the same. Now what to read next? If you now want to deepen your understanding, I suggest you get your hands on a copy of Cresswell and Clark's Designing and Conducting Mixed Methods Research. It is one of the standard methods books on this topic and it is applicable for any social science discipline.